Yeah, I'm a sea breather. Oh, what? It's eight pounds. It's good words. Sold. Alright, Jigs and Ghouls, the scariest time of the year is coming along and of course I speak about the US elections. So in order to celebrate this I've decided to do some horror-thons on the months of uh, August, September and October and I've been uh, doing uh, Richards from Are You In The Horror challenges for three months to Halloween. The challenge for August was that we were, we were supposed to read a book uh, that was uh, 31 years ago or older, that was published 31 years ago or older. And the challenge for September was to read a book that takes place in Halloween. So I took this book from Mitchell Lehman, Night Show and All Hallows Eve which is a two for one. I've got a full collection of uh, these books. It's not visible right now. Yep, there it is. As you can see, it's a full set of those books. And I've read them. I was supposed to read The Hallow Eve because I had the book and it was one of the few books. I had a read that was taking place in Halloween. Uh, it was a twin one. I'd say, okay, let's read the entire book. Let's, let's read Night So uh, the synopsis uh, sounds great. So these two books were published in 1984 for Night So and 1985 for All Hallows Eve. So they're pretty old. They're about as old as I am. And it's book three in this 18 book collection of Richard Lehman. I've read the first two books of the series as well as books 4, uh, 5 and 16. I had a review for book 16, Night in the Last of October and North Sanctuary on this channel. I'll leave a link. It should be somewhere up there. So let's get to Night Show. Night Show is a Lehman light book. I was impressed by how non lemon esque it felt. It's about a boy, Tony, who likes to scare people using special effects. So he and his friends abduct one of his classmates and they lock her in a haunted house, which is uh, pretty much a staple for Lemon, I guess. It's one of the tropes he really does a lot. And he comes out here dressed as a ghost and uh, she goes uh, out of her mind. She runs outside panicked and she's hit by a car and falls into a coma. Tony, having um, enjoyed this, uh, making this girl, Linda, scared, he goes to Hollywood and tries to get a job into the special effects business. And he is uh, stalking this woman, Danny, who is one of the best special effects people in Hollywood, along with Tom Savini and other people that are mentioned here and she just got into a relationship with her assistant. So she is gripped as Tony is talking her. He's trying to get her attention by pulling some uh, tasteless pranks. Meanwhile, in Tony's hometown, Linda gets out of her coma and she's out for vengeance. So she murders each and every friend of Tony's that helped him play this trick on her. Actually, it's another layman trope. We have two parallel stories coming together in the end, and I mostly hate that. I said that in No Sanctuary, I really hated that. But, uh, and also in Out of the Lights. In Out of the Lights was also a book that was two plot lines coming together in the end, and I actually didn't like this book too. But here it works because actually those two storylines tie along together very well. They start, uh, they involve the same person and it works. It's a short book. There is not too much gore or actually there is some gore, but it's stuff they watch in movies or they make special effects for. So that's pretty tame in that way. And also something weird for Lehman, all uh, sex scenes, and there are plenty of sex scenes because we have this couple, Danny and her assistant, Jack, 
and they're just in the beginning of the relationship so they lose no opportunity and there are some descriptions there um, it's fun and even some of the most uh, more dubious uh, sex scenes are actually consensual in a way so that's a first for layman that's um, if you are interested in reading to Richard Lehman and you want you're put away by the sleaziness and um, the sexual violence this is a decent book to begin with and actually you won't miss out because the writing in this book in both these books is very solid uh, Lehman had this writing style was very short very simple short sentences small paragraphs small chapters a uh, very quick action and here he gets up to perfection and he's actually quite good he has a good pace a good clip and actually a good cl climax in this book and what I have to say is that the way Lehman writes dialogue and characters this book this type of book this uh, sleazy uh, horror thriller doesn't deserve such good dialogue because Lehman is great at writing dialogues and here we have characters in some weird situations or with some very extreme motives and they actually make sense they're not deep characters they are uh, characters but they make sense I mean even Danny who is deathly afraid and she tries to deal with Tony who is harassing her but she's not quite taking charge of it and is not uh, going after him going the offensive and she make excuses she feels awkward that's that makes sense the characters here don't make stupid decisions and that's horror novel and the biggest problem with horror novels or horror movies is the characters do stupid things here they do some extreme things uh, some of them are cookie but they make perfect sense and I think that's a good uh, for skull review yes I have a rating system I'll give it a good uh, for skulls uh, basically for being uh, so having so good dialogues and characters and it's fun it's a good thriller it's quite like watching a TV movie some psychological TV movie thriller with a stalker going after somebody etc it was good fun now the other book of Hallow's Eve is also very short um, it's about a small town where uh, people in high school get invitations to a party that will happen in Holland House, in a battle house where some savage murders happens and you know there's some mystery why is this happening and why are they going there and the book begins with a first chapter that has some uh, great tension good scares, uh, not enough gore but there is gore aplenty as we go along, there are some gory kills here because another serial killer uh, novel somebody is uh, offing people and there are way out of characters in this book this book is uh, 120 pages long in this version and this version is pretty dense I mean, uh, they don't even bother to change page in certain changes so it's supposed to be 250 in the paperback edition so not very long, but there are a lot of characters here and each of them uh, has a personality of their own again it's very dimensional and there are some drama here some uh, stuff everybody has they have different motives and different way they do stuff and there is this murder investigation because we have this uh, kid Eric who is probably the protagonist as we can see he's in the center of this and his mother is dating a police officer his father he doesn't know who his father is because he uh, forced himself on his mother and that's how she became pregnant so it's a layman <laughs> what do you expect there is some mystery about how who is doing these murders uh, but it's all pretty early and uh, okay uh, to be fair that's a fun book that's a fun read very quick read I've read it in two days but I think that towards the end it's very rushed it ends very fast, there's not enough action, the, the epilogue is pretty, oh yes, this happened and that's all, there's no climax to this book, the climax is very weak, yeah, the writing is good again, it's very uh, well paced, it's simple writing, but technically it's very efficient, I think it was Edward Lorne, who has having uh, his top five Richard Lehman novels, and he said that Richard Lehman was a very technical writer, and that's true, he was a very good writer, 
he passed away in 2001, I believe. I think here he was at the top of his game because if we go to uh, that's book three, two books in one, it's 440 pages, and then we go to uh, volume five, it's thicker, it's 600 pages long, um, fun land and the stake. Volume 6 is almost 900 pages long. And yes, because I'm a cheap reader, I get these books um, because they were like uh, 8 pounds. <laughs> it's two books and it's really huge. And since I had taken these books in the past, I had started this collection with these books. I finished the collection this way. Yeah, I'm a cheap reader. I mean, I, I, I see people on YouTube being like, oh, this book had an amazing cover and I had to buy it. And I'm like, Oh, what? It's eight pounds. It's good words. Sold. And again, I'm the guy who actually spent a hundred euros to get uh, two uh, quadrilles this by Catherine Kerr uh, simply because I like this cover. So I get that sometimes you have to buy a book because it's pretty. But never mind that. Um, since I was ordering these books from Amazon Co., it was five euros to get them shipped. So yeah, we went for two for one. And also, you know what, I kind of like this format because it's a two for one. You don't know what exactly you're getting apart from uh, sleaze and gore. Uh, so it's got this feeling of a grindhouse, of a two in one uh, show like in Night Show. So that's, that's great actually, that's a two in one. And I like to read the books back to back or close to back to back maybe. So another book in between because I'm bored of reading a series one after the other. I guess it's got this grand house feel, it feels uh, very fun. Overall, um, Night Show is a good uh, soft layman book for those who want to try his writing, but are there squeamish about his um, more unsavory and uh, sleazy stuff. And All Hallows Eve is fun, for fans of it's a layman, but really the ending is really falling apart. I think that over here he gets the top of his writing, even though um, probably he rushes towards the end. I mean, in All Hallows Eve, I don't know, either, either he ran out of pages or he had to finish the book and sip it out uh, because he was running low on a deadline. Uh, he was a very technical writer, very good writer, very solid, did amazingly good character work and still he was writing this um, trashy horror paperbacks or thrillers, because he considered himself a crime author, not a horror author, whatever. On his other books, I mean, I was reading this uh, book two summers ago, and I was very pissed, because he had this uh, very bad descriptions of actions, of stuff happening, and his writing was very dry. And actually, reading No Sanctuary last summer, I was like, he, he died as he was writing the book, so at some point the writing changes, it becomes from overly detailed, very uh, bare bones and rust, and I was like, yes, he was, he did the first draft, and then he was adding those uh, descriptions in. I believe he was just padding his books to make some uh, editorial mandates, and I think that his books, uh, two of his books, should be that long. That was his writing style. And he did the optimal writing here. Uh, yes, of course, he could have done some more pages for uh, to the end of All Hallows Eve because there was a lot of build up and the uh, climax was. Ugh. But overall, yes, it was fine. I enjoyed them, they were good. Uh, feel good horror, that's what I think Layman is. I think Michelle Layman is feel good extreme horror, which sounds very wrong, I guess. But that was my opinion. If you've read any of those two books, uh, leave a comment below your opinion. And I'll see you soon, and on October, for um, Rachel's Talents, I'm reading this book over here, so subscribe if you want to watch a review about it. As always, like, uh, press the subscribe button, leave a comment, and I'll see you soon. Stay spooky.